Welcome back. In the last lesson, we looked at machine learning models and how to select a machine learning model based on the data. And in this lesson, we'll get some data sets of uh, molecules and see uh, what the data looks like before we decide on what machine learning models to use. In this lesson, we'll look at the QM9 data set and we'll use this throughout the course. And this data set contains a density functional, a density functional Thevi data for small molecules. And the data set has around 134,000 uh, molecules. And the details can be found on this website over here. The website, the molecule net has other data sets too. Uh, and I encourage you to look at the website and see all the available data sets that we can use for training. But in this course, we'll just restrict ourselves to the QM9 data set. You can download the CSV file of uh, the QM9 data set from the website and upload it onto the Google Colab as shown. And you can do this for any web, uh, any files, any CSV files or Excel files that you see and proceed from here on. But uh, this is one way to do it. In, in this course, we'll just try to get it from the URL. As we know, the URL for the QM9 data set, we can uh, use it uh, to get the CSV file and directly load it into the pandas data frame for analysis. And this is a Google Colab environment. And if you're using this for the first time, all you need to do is press this play button to execute the code. And once the code is executed, you will see uh, a check mark over there and it will also show the time that it uh, needed to run the code and in three seconds this was completed so we know that this the code in this cell has been executed so what we are trying to do over here is to import the pandas uh, library and using the pandas library what we can do is load the the csv file in this case we are directly loading it from the url if you have downloaded the CSV file and put it into the the environment over here, you can replace the URL that you see over here with the entire URL with the file name. And this should be replaced by the file name and that should work. And this line of code reads in the CSV file. And what we then do is look at the top five entries just to make sure uh, what the data frame looks like and what we have in the data frame. And it shows that we have 21 columns and it shows the five top entries because we requested for five entries. And there's a mall ID, there's a smiles. This is, this is a way how you're going to represent a molecule. They use the smile representation and we have some A, B, C, Mu, Alpha, Homo, Lumo, Gap, and so on and so forth. We can see that there are 21 uh, columns with some data. This U is the internal energy, G is, I think, the Gibbs free energy, so on. So we, we know what molecules are. We have some representation of it, but it's always better to look at what the molecules look like and how clean the data set is. Sometimes they are missing entries and we would want to avoid any of those entries before proceeding uh, to machine learning models training. So what we'll do over here is analyze the data set at at least the molecular level and see what the molecules look like. And the molecules over here are represented by smiles representation. It's just the string representation that you see over here. Uh, what we want to do now is to look at a 2D uh, representation of the molecule and see whether it's uh, whether it's a good molecule, sometimes there will, there will be errors in molecules. So we want to just make sure that everything is okay before we proceed. Uh, we can do that by using RDKit. So let's install RDKit. And if you're new to RDKit and never used it before, uh, I would uh, suggest you go back onto the Chemistry with uh, Code YouTube channel and uh, look up for uh, a video where uh, I discuss in detail how to use RDKit. So we have installed RDKit and see it's successfully installed. So we can move on to 
uh, converting the smiles into a molecular representation. For that, we first import the chem module uh, from RDKit and also import the mold to grid image for visualizing 2D structures. And we'll see how to use it in, in the code that follows. We run it, we see a check mark over there, this code ran. And let's say uh, we want to look at the last molecule in the data set. And what we can do is uh, tail one, uh, df dot tail one df is the data set that we loaded and tail one should give us the last molecule in this data set which is this you can pick up any molecule but over here what i'm interested to do is look at the last molecule in the data set and we have the smiles representation for it to visualize the molecule we would need to convert this smile representation to an rdkit molecule object so the code over here starts doing that so first we uh, use this mole from smiles uh, function which converts the smiles to an rdkit molecule and we use moles to grid image which generates a 2d structure for the molecule do note that uh, it needs a list of molecules to uh, show the 2d structure so that's the reason we have used the uh, uh, brackets over here to make it a list and once we run it, we see that this is the molecule that the last entry in the data set corresponds to. We can do that for a bunch of molecules. And what we'll uh, do over here is just use the same code and apply it to say 20 of the uh, entries. So df.sample will give us a sample. And when we set n equal to 20, it gives us 20 samples. So the sample data frame will be just random 20 entries. And from there, we apply this uh, to list uh, function on smiles. So the smiles list is a list of smiles for those 20 entries. And once we have that, we can then do list comprehension over here, which is first, uh, it reads in the smiles from the list, we loop over the smiles. So the smile, and smile list will be given and that smile is then pushed into this code over here which is chem.mol from smiles so it will uh, generate a molecule object because this is a for loop this would give us a list of molecules from the smiles representation and that's what we need uh, in uh, moles to grid image it needs a list of rdkit molecule objects and once we run this code we'll get 20 randomly selected molecules and we can look at what those molecules look like they look good all all bonds uh, are satisfying uh, like nitrogen has three bonds or carbon has four bonds oxygen has two bonds this all looks good so nothing to be worried about but if you want to just drop something out of this uh, uh, data set we can do that and let me show you an example of how we can do that. So the sample data frame is uh, the 20 uh, more entries that we selected from top. And let's just look at the four bottom ones. And these are the four bottom entries. Suppose we want to uh, remove one of the entries from here. And let's say we want to remove uh, this one. One, three, zero. So in that case, what we can do is we use this entry and over here it was done for something else. So let's say we want to drop that entry from here. So uh, drop the entry. So we'll just replace this drop entry by the ID code and run that again. And you can do this for any of the IDs that you see over here. Just make sure you replace the ID into drop over here make sure the id matches and then if you look at the data frame we see that the id one uh, one zero three zero zero one is now gone from the data set and uh, it was between uh, 1041 and the 42001 and we see that that thing is removed in the clean data frame so we can do this for a lot of things and if you find some missing data you be, you be sure to remove it and uh, if some molecules are not right, remove those two and have a clean data set for, for
for machine learning. Oh, this on top was just shown for molecular structures, but we can even do that for molecular properties. And let's say we want to plot the gap of the molecule. Okay, so what we do is sample.df. These are just for 20 molecules, remember. And from there, we plot the histogram for the gap, which is the homo lumo gap. And we see that the data set is not so great. We see that there's a spike here, there's missing data there, there's spike somewhere here. So if there's something between these two, 20 and something over here, it may not be good in predicting the values, right? Because it has some missing data in these regions. So the model may not be so good in here. But what we could do is uh, look at the entire data set. And what we see over here is this is nice normal distribution like thing. So we can expect if we train the model with this data, it will be somewhat accurate for this central one and a little bit less accurate for this and a little bit less accurate for these values over here at point one. But it's still better than the top distribution that we had, which is missing some entries year and year. So having a normal distribution of data is good. And that's what we should aim at and make sure that the data is as much as normally distributed or has a Gaussian like distribution over here. And that's, that's pretty good. And if your data is missing that, you can make sure you add some more data if possible, or just concentrate on, on the part that is more normal like for training a machine learning model.